Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Johnny and I have ported four games to three consoles using two different engines. And I believe it's about time I let you know about the process. First, let me inform you that I registered my company with the three big corporations back in 2018. So some things may have changed since then. But, given the fact that the number of games being released per month on consoles has increased over the years, my guess is that the acceptance and registration part has most likely gotten easier, not harder. Second thing is that I'm under NDA, and the information I will be giving you on the process of console porting is going to be vague, but not too vague. Now, I'm going to divide this video into five steps. Step 1. You have to contact the three companies and inform them that you're interested in porting your game to their platforms. This is done by simply filling a form that tells them about your game and of course you have to include screenshots, video footage, a short description and sometimes a demo. This sounds easy, but for people who have low confidence, this might be rather difficult. I myself was very reluctant to send my resume to the big three because my game was not doing very well on Steam, and I just assumed that they would see my number of reviews or other public Steam statistics and reject my game based on those metrics alone. But that was not the case, and I got accepted by all three of them, and one by one I started porting my game. Step 2. Getting the dev kits. This was rather easy for me. After I registered my company with the respective console companies, I signed a few of the NDAs, and then they sent me the hardware. Two out of three of them sent me free dev kits as well as free shipping. One of them asked me for a few hundred dollars. The dev kits arrived within a week and setting them up was pretty easy. I don't know if these conditions have changed or not. There is a chance that the ones that gave free dev kits no longer give free dev kits due to the fact that the number of console developers have significantly increased over the years. After you receive the dev kits, you then have to download a 5 to 10 GB SDK on your computer, and that will allow your game engine to create a build for that console. Keep in mind that some of the SDKs only work on PC and not Mac, so having a PC is a requirement for some of these console portings. Step 3. The porting process. Once you download the SDK and set up your game engine for that console, you then have to do 5 things to get your game working on that platform. If your game is multiplayer or complex, there is going to be more than 5 things, but for the average single player game, there are only 5 things. Number 1 is the controls. For the two engines that I have used so far, it's done pretty easily. The default gamepad code that comes with the engine works most of the times, and you may only have to make some minor adjustments. Sometimes controller vibration can be difficult to set up, so if you can't figure it out, Leave it for last. Your game doesn't have to have vibration in order to be released. Number two is the load and save scripts. For PC, we usually use some sort of INI file writer. For consoles, the same method can be used, but you're going to need a few extra bits of code or an entire plugin in order to translate the INI file writing to whatever method that specific console uses. Depending on console, this takes about one to seven days to figure out. Number three is the console specific features, such as trophies or achievements, as well as leaderboards and other extra features you may or may not want to have. These usually need their own plugins, which comes with their own example scripts, and once you rewrite them to your own needs, they're good to go. This also takes about one to seven days to figure out. Number four is optimization. If your game is 2D, you don't have to worry about this. Or if you're going 3D, even simplistic 3D, you may or may not have to optimize certain parts of your game. Number five, you have to play your game start to finish at least once, which in my opinion is the most time-consuming part of the whole process. And that's all. When you do a console port for the first time, it will take you two to four weeks in total to port the game per console. But the second time you do it for that console, it will take you one to two weeks because you can just import your code from the previous game and you don't have to spend all that time figuring things out. Step four, the certification. 
Every console has a list of certification requirements that you can find on their respective dev portals. These requirements can be something obvious and simple, such as your game needs to work, or it could be something that might cost you a few days of development time, such as your loading screen should not exceed 30 seconds. And then there are tech requirements, which are handled by your game engine most of the time. For example, how the game should react when suspended, or does your game switch audio devices if a headphone is connected? Stuff like that, so you don't have to worry about them too much. Once you have tested everything, you can send your game to the certification center of that console. From my understanding, in most cases, the certification team plays the entire game start to finish to make sure there are no issues. And sometimes they do it multiple times on multiple devices. If there is an issue, you have to fix it and then send it back to certification and then they will play your game start to finish again. One of the common reasons that my games have failed certification is because of the use of wrong terminology. For example, in one of my games, I used the word gamepad vibration in the option menu. And for one of the consoles, they said that the word gamepad was not allowed because they had their own unique word for it. Another example was that the word flash was not allowed for some reason. So I had to change it to visual. Keep in mind that this had to do with the terminology in the options menu. So the word flash grenade, for example, should not be a problem. So, best thing to do is to take screenshots of your main menu and option menu and send them by email to the certification team of that console and have them double check before you send the actual game for final certification. Step 5. The store page. This is by far the easiest part, but compared to Steam it is a bit harder. For example, some of the consoles will require you to translate your store page to a dozen languages even if you don't support those languages in-game. And if you are showing keyboard and mouse UI in your screenshots and video trailer, you will obviously have to change those to appropriate UI for that console. Some consoles divide their store pages to regions, such as Europe, America and Asia. And you will have to do the store page setup for all three of them separately. It's not that hard, you just have to upload the same screenshots and videos and assets three times. Well, that brings us to the end. My suggestion is to apply for all three consoles simultaneously. Whichever console responds and sends you dev kits faster, start with porting your game with that one. And then do it for the other ones. 